Breeding Gargoyle Geckos is not for the faint of heart. These guys are a little bit more aggressive than the Crested Geckos, so whenever the breeding season comes around and you have a group of them together, you are at risk of your geckos losing their tails, almost definitely, and injuries like this happening. So it is important for you to be prepared on how to take care of an animal like this, and of course we gotta get it to the vet, but the first thing you wanna do is make sure the wound is clean and maybe apply some sort of ointment on it that is gonna help it from getting infected. So two days ago, we were out here feeding geckos and checking up on the animals, and we noticed that this girl had a really bad injury. Now, she actually comes from this group, G2, and when we pulled her out, it was really bad. I could see her bone, and there was even like little maggots crawling out of her head. So immediately, what we had to do is was separate her. We make sure we clean the wound with some water and, some, and an iodine solution. And then after we see that there are no more worms in her head, you know, we could apply the ointment. The worms are due to the fruit flies. Now, when we have this many geckos in a room like this, it doesn't take long before a fruit fly lays eggs in the little wound and they just start creating larvae. So it's like a nightmare situation. I've actually done a video of something very similar that happened uh, a long time ago in our old facility. After we find this girl, the, the main thing that we gotta do is make sure she's on her own, separated in a very clean and sanitized enclosure, and we gotta get it, get it clean as soon as possible because the vet is not gonna be able to see her the same day, so we right before we take her to the vet, we have to make sure that the area is clean and it's not gonna get any worse. And it already has gotten a lot better than it was two days ago when we found it. So iodine is one of the best anti antiseptics that you could use for open wounds. And what we do is we'll basically, we dilute it with water to make it look like a tea, just like this. You don't wanna use it pure and you don't wanna use it, you know, without iodine because you wanna make sure it's gonna be able to disinfect it. So with this, what I typically do is I'll, I'll get some of this in here so I could drip it into the wound. I'll just gotta kinda hold her tight here. And this is gonna be good for disinfecting it. So I'll go ahead and spray some in here. Now obviously you wanna make sure that you're all sanitized and you're not gonna be uh, grabbing something that might cause a bigger issue or an infection. And of course I am not a veterinarian. This is just what I've done over the years with experience. I've seen head injuries like this before and in other parts of their body. After this, we're going to go ahead and apply an antibacterial ointment and that is what is going to keep this thing clean until we get her to the vet. And basically when they get to the vet, what they're probably gonna do is get her on antibiotics and they're going to get her on a laser treatment. So the laser basically just helps the area heal a lot quicker and the antibiotics will kill any infections that she might have inside from the open wound already. The best antibacterial uh, ointment that we have found that was actually recommended to us by vet was this one, I can't pronounce that, that's called nitrofurazone, whatever, but this is actually the best one that we found, and this is what we're going to go ahead and apply on her wound. So I'll grab a little bit of this. I'm gonna make sure you know, it's all covered, all the open wound. A little bit on her nose there. Now these guys are incredibly tough and part of breeding unfortunately is that some animals are not going to be compatible, they're not going to get along and they could cause each other really bad injuries. On a gargoyle gecko like this, uh, right off the bat I know she's going to be okay because of how she's reacting, she's not lethargic or anything, she's actually reacting pretty good and it has already healed really really well compared to um, you know some other animals that get injuries this bad. These animals are very, very incredible in the terms of how they could heal. So I'm not worried about her too much. I know she's going to make it through. But of course, we got to get her to the vet, get some laser done. In a couple, maybe in a couple weeks, we'll give you guys an update of, on how she's doing. But as of right now, she, uh, she's moving pretty good, you know. Obviously, she doesn't have her full energy because she did take a big uh, injury, but she'll be back soon. So it is really important that we keep these guys super clean and super sanitary so there is no you know, other things that are going to be affecting her. So I'll pretty much switch out this paper towel 
every other day or every day even, depends on how much of a mess she makes. So for this, what we like to use to clean is a chlorhexidine solution. This is also what's been recommended to us by the vet. You basically dilute it with water and you'll mix it and that's what you use to clean. Now, this stuff is pretty safe for animals. The chemicals, it's not gonna hurt your animals as long as you basically wipe it all out. But this is gonna disinfect the enclosure. And at this time, I'm keeping her in this little tub just so I can monitor her better, you know, so I have her food and her water and I know that she, uh, and I could keep track if she's eating or not better. I just got her some clean water. We're gonna leave it right there. And then her food from last night, that's still good. I'm gonna leave right there. So this girl will go in here. Maybe I'll give her a hide in a bit, but as of right now, this is as simple as we're gonna keep it because we don't want anything else to, to get in, in, infected, right? So we don't keep her on any substrate. If you keep substrate, then you're gonna risk, you know, some dirt or mulch or moss getting stuck in that wound and you don't want that. So we're gonna keep it just like this. So that's it for now, guys. Now we're going to be taking her to the vet in a bit. So thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe. I hope you, you learned something from this. This is how we do it. This is not by no means veterinary advice, but the best thing to do in a case like this is take the animal to the vet. So we'll see you guys on the next one and thank you.